it's in here. I know I didn't remove it. Uh, welcome center. Let's use a feature of Vista. Welcome center. Look at this. The, this is our system here. We don't customize this welcome screen. We don't think that's needed. There's no sense in us trying to sell you nonsense here. So this is straight up how it would get if you installed Vista yourself out of the box on there. And do you see anything here about a tutorial? There's just nothing here about tutorial. Ways to protect your PC. Ways to, you know, buy more stuff. Transfer files, settings. Oh yeah, got to connect to the internet. But you don't see anything about a tutorial. Maybe there's more items here. Sign up for technical support. Oh gee, thanks. Let's see what's under here. Oh, what's new in Vista? Now come on, who's really gonna dig into this? Every time I see somebody get a new system, they get one of these things. I, I still see people that have had Vista for, you know, two or three months, and they still have their welcome center popping up every time they log in. They don't uncheck the box. They just keep hitting the X. That means they're not even reading this thing. Uh, if they actually had a thing at the bottom, it, it was annoying when you installed it, but it was just a one-time annoyance. Um, they would actually pop up and say, hey, would you like to take a free tour of XP? That, that actually stood out because you had this thing, you're installed, and all of a sudden, what's this thing at the bottom? That, that kind of stood out. I hate to even talk about it in Millennium Edition. As soon as you installed it for the first time, it had that little god awful video that started playing, telling you all the great things Millennium could do. It, it failed to mention that it would cause device drivers to disappear, your network would be erratic, but it, it tried to let you know that it had new features. It, that you don't really get that with this stuff. It's just, you're supposed to know. People don't know about the Flip 3D. Um, of course, the tech technical people do. If you go to a store and you might be lucky enough, somebody will show you some of that. But people really don't know what all it's capable of. Uh, people just go in here, they go to programs, they, they don't even notice the search here. This is a very useful feature. Uh, something else they stole from Mac OS. They want to admit it or not, this is stolen from there. It reeks of it. They might as well just make this a blue circle with a white magnifying glass. <clears throat> but that would be a little too obvious then, wouldn't it? They can search for anything. If I want to search for, um, I think I got uh, Cirrus on here. Hmm. Well, wow, that's a little bug, isn't it? There's a bug for you. I was looking for Sears. We got some MP3s on here, but obviously it's not in a search path. You type it in there, it's not finding it. What's up with that? Well, if I hit search everywhere, well now it opens this thing up and starts searching the whole thing. But you have to have it do the index there. Little things like that. The computer's still searching. Love that. Well, this is more of a useful feature for finding programs, because that's in your search paths automatically. Um, I've heard of people say they tried to find programs and they they couldn't do it. Um, you know, I haven't had problems with that. I type in the name of the program, it pops up fine. You might want to check to see how you're typing it in. Um, another cool thing there is kind of really don't need to do your run anymore. Start run. I can type in, you know, msconfig here. Get the user access control. Hit continue. Pops up. That's, that's all there is. I want to make sure I had that processor tweak on. I'll go over that sometime later in another episode. <coughs> But, uh, yeah, it 
it's just people don't know really what all it's capable of. They don't understand the interface. If you've been using uh, Windows since 95, you went to 98, you went to ME, you went back to 98, uh, then you went to 2000, <laughs> a lot of people did that, and then they went to XP, you're used to the old way of how Windows works. You start programs, that was it. A lot of people are still see will convert their XP start menu to a more classic menu. Uh, I was one of those that did that for a while until I eventually got used to that menu. It's just one of those folks you got to you got to get used to it. Um, change comes and you got to live with it. But just sitting down with people, showing them some of the differences, some of the features. I think there won't be so much complaints, fears. I mean, just right here, you're going, well, I want to go to view folder options. There's there's hidden files here. I want to view those. Well, people don't know, you can hit Alt and go to Tools, Folder Options. It's little things like that. Um, just pressing the Alt key on your keyboard just once, it automatically shows this up. If you click anywhere else, or you actually click a uh, menu option, you know, like select all, it goes ahead and goes away. Microsoft pretty much has gotten rid of the menus in there. You'll notice in Internet Explorer 7 for XP, same thing as Vista. There's no file menu, there's no options, all that. It's the same thing. Just hit alt, shows up. Now you can set it up to always, you know, show the menu bar. You can just check the box there, it'll always show up. Uh, so I find I don't need it in Vista. It, one thing I ever need it for is if I need to view hidden files, folder options, and I turn it on. That's it. So a little bit of training for people, especially technicians. It's it's uh, a bloody shame that you go around, you hire people. Um, I'm going to just flat out call someone out. The Geek Squad, you know, they charge you a couple hundred bucks, usually look at your system, and they don't understand Vista, they don't know how it works, but they're, quote-unquote, the experts. They, they advertise as being the experts. They know things. Uh, I think that's their tagline. They know things. Okay. Good for them. Obviously, they don't know things about Vista. Uh, <clears throat> technicians all the time they just don't have proper training and if the technicians don't have the proper training they're not going to properly show the end user what's going on they're not going to understand the issue they're going to just blame it on Vista it's something wrong with Vista Vista doesn't work right Vista doesn't do this Vista is a piece of junk you need to switch back to XP we can do that for you for an extra 300 bucks uh, come on <laughs> uh, it's just one of those things that people that are selling it to you don't understand it, you're going to get something bad at the end of it, you know? Um, that's just flat out it. You got the system builders, they don't understand it. Um, they think they finally started getting the systems right, um, and I'm including HP, Dell, all of them actually started making what I would consider a stable system for Vista about two months after it was released. During that time frame, all the systems I saw being sold, they, they were kind of flaky. The drivers weren't up to par. They were basically, it was just beta. It was really a big beta test for them. Okay, Vista's out. Let's throw all these systems. We have no idea. We haven't really tested. We haven't really done anything with. And then that put a bad taste in everybody's mouth about Vista. And then they start blaming it all on Vista. Microsoft's not always the guy to blame, even though they're the biggest around, but just keep that in mind. Uh, <clears throat> again, this is uh, the Knock Radio. Uh, ooh, not the Knock Radio. The Knock TV. The Knock TV. That's that's a habit there. Sorry about that. Um, and this is the Network Operations Center. We want to answer your questions. If you've got any issues with Vista, I want you to post that as a video 